Oh, good evening. Good evening. I think it's about a year. Brother Tom, I think so, eh? Uh, since uh, I've been with you, uh, precious uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, thank you for inviting me back. And um, it's a privilege. I, I found it, uh, we, uh, we just had a young people meeting there. That's, uh, that's a real privilege uh, for me. I, I became a, a great grandfather again this week. So that's number two. We have 11 grandchildren and two great grandchildren, an American born up the road there in St. Lucie, Anthony Martin um, the fifth was born on uh, Tuesday in St. Lucie. So my son has moved uh, permanently now to Florida. So you can't get rid of me is what I'm trying to tell you, okay? What I wanted to uh, share with you in the couple of messages is I, I've been doing a series back home. Zoom is good for some things, you know. I can still preach to our assembly back home. And I've been doing a series that I started last fall or last summer on the, I called it the secrets of the Apostle Paul. And the verse that I use, it's been the theme verse, is found in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. So if you have your Bibles, turn to uh, Philippians chapter 4 and uh, verse 9 here. And it, I'm not going to preach from there so much tonight, but I want to show you that verse. It's just a verse that I... I really never noticed before. You know, I was telling the young people tonight. We shared a verse in Proverbs 23 and 23, and that is, and I asked them to memorize it. And these kids are smart, so they probably got it memorized already. Get the truth and never sell it. Get wisdom. Get discipline and get discernment or good judgment. And I, I, I was telling the young people, don't leave home without that, that verse, because it, 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 it is such an important verse in the Bible. Get the truth and never sell it. Well, here we're going to look at a verse that caught my attention well over a year ago now, and I've been meditating on it, and in Philippians 4 and verse 9. Now, I'll read it in two. Uh, it's very clear. It says, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. What you have seen, what you have heard, uh, what, uh, uh, you know, it's incredible. I, I never really saw that verse before, it seems. What you have learned, what you have received, what you have heard, what you have seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So that, um, we're going to look at uh, a couple of ways the Apostle Paul, we're going to learn from his example what he taught and what he did. And I, I pray that it'll be practical in your, in your life, Christian. Okay? So the secrets of the Apostle Paul. Now, I want to talk to you about a secret that Paul learned and taught to the church of Thessalonica. Okay, so if you turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I, I want to read um, the first nine verses there, okay? And then we'll, we're going to see a secret that the Apostle Paul learned 
and that he taught to a young church. And I think you'll find this encouraging. Now concerning, okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. Now concerning how and when this will, all, all, this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we really don't need to write to you. For you know quite well that the day of the Lord, uh, the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin. And there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters. And you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief, for you are all children of light and of day. We don't belong to darkness and night. So be on your guard, not asleep, stay alert and clear-headed or sober-minded. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light of, in the light, okay, so this is the key verse, but let us who live in the light be clear-headed or sober, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing our helmet, the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour his anger on us. Paul learned a secret of being sober minded are clear headed Christian I asked you some questions here tonight be honest with yourself you certainly don't have to put your hand up are any of you in this room be honest with yourself fearful overwhelmed angry Mental health is a big problem in our society today. I think, and I've said this many a times from the pulpit in the last two years, COVID has done something to the church. I believe 100% that they are real spiritual overtones to what's happened in this world. And what I mean by that is I believe, and I was teaching this to the young people tonight, that we have a vision. If you are a Christian, God gives you a view that the world can't see out there. And I have seen, in my own experience, people, Christians, who have succumbed to some very serious anxiety and even depression through what's happened in the world. Now, I don't minimize that. I don't minimize that. But I think there is huge spiritual connotations going on. And the Apostle Paul said, if you remember what we read in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, he said, that if you would listen to what I've taught you, what you've learned from me, what you have seen in me, then, he says, the God of peace will be with you. That is, uh, Christian, that is so key. Because you and I are not immune 
We have no immunity to what's going on in the world if we are not clear-headed and sober-minded and understand that there is a spiritual war going on. There was a preacher, I was telling our, our, my brother Tom there um, before the meeting, there's a preacher that I heard online maybe about a month ago, and look, he... He was just giving Christianity Today statistics. Christianity Today says that 50% of Christians, now, are they really born again or whatever? I don't want to get into that. But that number, he said that 50% of Christians will not return to church after COVID. I can tell you safely that in our assembly back home in Sudbury, we have lost, we're just starting to open up again. We have lost 15 to 18 people that were in the assembly. And for whatever reasons, COVID was part of it and they've left. And, um, in this time that you and I live in, we need to be sober. Understand that you and I, Christian, have a privilege. We are privileged people. Because our worldview is much different than the world out there. But if we think like the world, we will never have peace that the Apostle Paul talked about. Here he is in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. If you are not convinced about the return of the Lord, you need to read 1 and 2 Thessalonians. Because the Apostle Paul, if you read about his, his teaching there, only lasted about three weeks. This is a young church, and here's what he says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 about this church. It's, it's amazing. He says this. Look at verse 9 um, of uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1. How you turned away from idols to serve the living and true God. Here's a baby church. Now Paul is writing to them. Okay. But he had only been there for about three weeks. And then he had to leave. He left this young church, and you know what was happening? They were thriving. They were thriving. But look what he said. How you turned from idols to serve the true and living God, and your testimony, and they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, you know what Paul taught them? He taught them, isn't it interesting, Christian, that here he is with a young church, so you can be sure he did it with every church. But the Apostle Paul, we read about, as he taught them that ab about the return of Jesus Christ. He said, listen, what is your hope? What is your hope? Our hope is in the return of Jesus Christ. And Paul taught this young church that in spite of the difficulties that they would go through, and he told them, this is no Sunday school picnic you're going to. When you join with Christ, you're going to be persecuted. But they were thriving with that. Here's a young church, and in every chapter of 1 Thessalonians, you read about the coming of Christ and how Paul taught them. Listen, Christian. You can't have peace. You can't have peace unless you understand the future. Okay? You can't, because if you live 
in the rear view mirror. And if you live today and then worried about tomorrow, what might happen, I tell you that is the recipe for anxiety and depression. Paul taught, Paul had learned the secret of Christ's return. He had, Christ taught him by revelation about the rapture of the church and about the, about the coming of the Lord for judgment. Look what he says in, first, uh, in, the, in the first chapter. You're not, um, you're not meant for God's wrath, church. God's wrath is coming to a theater near you. But it's not coming for you and me. What we see out there in the world is not God's wrath. It's man's. It's first... John 5 and 19, and the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. Christian, the world, the world as we see it, is turned upside down, isn't it? What is right is now wrong, and what is wrong is now right. True or false? That's what I was telling the young people tonight. You better not go into that world of indoctrination, the drip, 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 drip of the indoctrination that's in the world today. Without the truth. Get the truth and never sell it. Get wisdom. God will show you. God will show you. And that's what Paul was teaching this young church. He was showing them that your hope is in the future. Christ is coming back. You know what, folks? That early church was looking forward to Jesus Christ. They weren't looking for the Antichrist. They were looking for Christ. He taught them about the rapture of the church. We're not meant for God's wrath. You and I are in we are the bride of Christ. Study to show thyself approved, Christian. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That is so key. Eschatology, the study of the future, is a big part of the Bible. It's amazing. I was talking to a Christian up in, um, in uh, St. Lucie the other day. And it's just a young believer. He knew nothing of the end times. And to him, it was, well, we'll see what happens. And I, I, I really had a heart for this young man. And I said to him, listen, God doesn't want you to guess. God wants you to know. And if you study God's word, he will show you. That the coming of the Lord, that's why Paul was clear-headed. He learned the secret of being sober. Sober-minded. Because Paul knew. Paul knew the events. And the sequence. Christian, the rapture comes first. Don't look for the Antichrist, Christian, because the Antichrist is for the tribulation, not for you, not for me. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, you know what he said? He said this, because the problem with the, this baby church was the question they asked, well, what happens if when someone, hey, my loved one died? They loved the Lord. They just died. Did they miss the rapture? Paul says, no, I gotta, I, I'm writing you a letter. I taught you this. Now I'm going to remind you. You know what he said? 
We don't mourn like other people mourn. Why? Why don't you and I mourn like other people mourn when someone... Has anyone here lost a loved one? Yeah. Why don't we mourn if they are a believer like other people mourn? Paul says it. Now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died. Verse 13 of chapter 4. So you will not grieve. You will not mourn like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring with him the believers who have died. There's two comings, Christian. Paul said, look, those who have died, okay, those who have died, did you lose a loved one that knew the Lord? Absent in the body and what? Present with the Lord. The rapture, folks. The rapture. The dead in Christ will rise first. What does Paul mean by that? They're coming with Christ. He's with, they're with them now. Their, their soul is with Christ. Always with Christ, right? Absent in the body, present in the Lord. God is going to unite the church. Those who are with Christ right now, can you picture people that you know, right? That are with Christ right now? I think of my mother. I preached at her funeral. Saved a, a, a few weeks before she died. Deathbed. I, I know I'm going to see my mom. She's going to be in the rapture. The dead in Christ, what? Shall rise first. Their souls will meet their glorified body. God's going to turn off gravity. For those who belong to him. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we, our hope, right? Looking for the blessed hope. The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Jesus Christ, who redeemed us from all iniquity and purchased for himself a peculiar people, a peculiar people, zealous for good works. That's you and that's me. What happens if Christ comes tonight? He's not coming to this planet. He's coming to the air. We're going to rise. We're going to rise. The church is gone and 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 we're going to meet the lord in the air and what does paul say so shall we ever be with the lord true or false it's true how can you be sober-minded if you don't believe that when you see the craziness of going on in the world in the ukraine and um Everywhere else. Canada. You know, the last week in Canada. It only lasted two days. Monday, they declared martial law. Emergency measures. You know what that meant? No due process for any Canadian. If they arrested you, you went straight to jail. They, they could seize your bank account. Our prime minister declared martial law on Monday. Wednesday, he closed it. He ended it. You know what happened? The banks called the prime minister. You know what happened? You, you, when you see a TD bank, you know what a TD bank is down in the States? Do you know where that is? A TD, right? Well, that's our biggest bank in Canada. I, I, I have people that I know that are in uh, the the government of Canada. They said, Tony, the bank, TD, called the prime minister and said, you better put an end to it. We are running out of money. People went to the bank. They could seize their accounts. It was so fast that he, that he came on, went, they, he, it was past Monday in the legislature. 
Wednesday it was over because the banks called, said, you can't do this. We, we're out of money. People are running, taking all their money out of the banks. You scared them, right? But guys, all, the reason I say that is because I, if you and I don't understand, if we didn't learn anything out of COVID, we should have learned this. How fast things can happen, right? In two years, right? How fast it happened. It, it, it was overwhelming. Our lives changed. Our churches changed. Our homes changed. Our workplace changed. Uh, in Canada, we have a um, we have a, an identification on our on our uh, phone. They can track me. I, they're tracking me right now if they want, because I I've got my phone on. They track me, and. Uh, it happened almost overnight, guys. But if you read Revelation from chapter 6 to chapter 18, rightly divide the Word of God. Oh, Dr. Martin, man, 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 you know, I don't know if it says this, it's all symbolism. And I, Look, guys, look, look, I'm not saying Revelation is easy. But you show me in 6 to chapter 18, the fall of Babylon. If you read about the fall of Babylon in 17 and 18, and I believe Babylon, is it a city? Is, it, is, it, is, it, is that a name for a world system? I believe it is. I don't, I'm not saying it, it couldn't be a city, but I believe it's more the world um, you know, the world opposed to God. Babylon was always opposed to God, right? So you read 17 and 18. Do you know how fast that occurs? You can't buy and sell. Now, come on, guys. Think about that. Church, wake up. Think about that. You can't buy and sell. In Canada, you could not buy and sell. Only lasted two days, but you couldn't. If they wanted to seize your bank account, they seized your bank account. They knew who was opposed to the government, and they warned people that they were going to seize their bank accounts. Guys, I, you know, I look at that and I go, Lord, thank you, Jesus that I'm saved. I, I, I wasn't angry. I was sober. I was clear-headed. I said, Lord, if these things occur so quickly, doesn't that make the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the book of prophecy, even more exciting for you and for I? And guys, Revelation 6 to 18, the church ain't there. We're out of here. That's what Paul taught. He said, you know, not that the book of Revelation was already written, it wasn't. But Paul was saying to, to uh, the Thessalonians, now concerning how and when this will all happen, dear brothers and sisters, do we really, we really don't need to write to you about that. Why did he say that? Because I already taught you that is what he was saying. The church is gone, guys. You don't read about it in Revelation 6 to 18. Don't look for the church. You won't find it. We're gone. The bride were not appointed to God's wrath. What? Where was God's wrath pointed for the church? To his son. Do you understand the cross? God's wrath for the church occurred at the cross. So we're not appointed unto wrath. God's wrath, God took our place. We're out. And then, let me give you another reason that Paul 
He didn't talk about it here. But he, he, he taught, he taught, he taught this to the believers because God's wrath is coming in a period of seven years. The tribulation and then the three and a half point and then the great tribulation. Who's that for? Who's the tribulation for? Israel. You see, there's a, I could tell you, I could drive around here in South Florida, and I'm not kidding you. I would go, I bet you, I could find you 20, 30 churches within South Florida here that don't believe what I just said. Either covenant theology or whatever it is. That is permeated the church. And the bride has been duped. I'm telling you. That is false teaching. Because they eliminate Israel. And, and Paul never eliminated Israel. Read Romans. Paul never eliminated. You know what, folks? You know, we, we don't... Because... They're over there. We don't think about it too much. But I'll tell you, the fact that the Jews are back in their land is, it's, it's incredible. But you and I as Christians, what does that say for us? Tony, be sober. Be clear-headed. Christ is coming for the church. And when we're out of here... Christ will deal with the world and he will deal with the Jew again. He will deal with Israel again. It's called what? What is the last three and a half years called? Time of Jacob's trouble. And boy, they're going to be, there is going to be big time trouble. But guys, what I'm, why do I say this? Because this is very practical for you and for me. Paul wanted that church in Thessalonica to get their eyes off of their problems and the tribulations that they were going through personally and to look for the return of Jesus Christ. He who has his hope, this hope in himself, what does he do? He purifies himself even as Christ is pure. You and I, what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to look. I think our brother said it. I think our brother said it. Watch and pray. Watch. You know, people say, well, the signs are not for us. Well, I, I, I disagree with that. I, I do agree that the signs, in a sense, are not, um, you know, I, we understand that we're not going to be here through the tribulation. That there are really no signs for the rapture. But, folks, can we admit some things in the scriptures? That when we, when we read in um, Second Thessal uh, Second Timothy... Chapter 3, that in the last days, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, lovers of treasure, and certainly not lovers of God. Now, Christian, if you can't smell the coffee about what's going on in this world today, then I, 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 I don't know what to say to you. You're not reading your Bible. Of course, the signs are specifically for the, for the Jew. And, and the tribulation, Christ could come at any time. The, the, the Thessalonians believed that. That Christ could come at any moment. They were looking for that. The glorious appearing of Christ. But our responsibility in the meantime is to watch. Watch what? What are we watching for? The coming of Christ, not the Antichrist. He, Paul deals with that in 2 Thessalonians. You read 2 Thessalonians, and again, he said uh, the, the Antichrist is coming. You know, he, he talks about it in uh, uh, 
in in uh, chapter two. Don't be fooled by what they say, for the day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. Who's that? The Antichrist. But again, you see, it's not that we're not to read about these things. But we're to watch. And put your hand, don't put your hand up, but true or false? Is it possible? I talked to you about money. Not allowed to buy or sell. Is the technology already in place for uh, electronically to know where you are at all times? To know how much money you spent? Where you spent? It? Do you think that the world uh, could come under one leader, charismatic, promising peace? Do you think that that could happen? It, guys, these, these are dry runs. This is a dress rehearsal. That's what I say. Now, again, it, it's not so much for us, but we're the only ones that can understand it. How could it not be for us? The world, when they say peace and safety, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, right? Christ is going to come like a thief for them. But not for us. Because we're watching. We're praying. We're looking. We're sober. We're clear headed. Are we not? Are we so anxious? Are we so full of despair that we've forgotten the hope of the church? The hope for you and I? That the dead in Christ will rise first? And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Have we forgotten that Christian? When is the last time you thought about that? It's in the Bible. Paul taught it to a, a young, young church. He taught them the secret that he knew. About the future. And you and I know it. I love that. I love John 15, when Jesus calls me a friend. The world doesn't, the world's not a friend of God. He's not a friend of Jesus. They don't know what's coming, but you and I know what's coming. Doesn't that give you uh, a, a clear head, guys? Take away some anxiety that we feel. What a God. What a friend that we have. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again, O oh God, for your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's so good, Father, to us. I pray for the, uh, the, the saints here, Lord, and I pray that you would bless them and encourage them, watch over them, God, and uh, Father, show them. Show them again and again and again. Father, about uh, the return of Christ. He's coming in the air to, uh, to get us. And we thank you for that hope that we have, Father. We pray, Father, for peace within our own hearts. And we pray, Father, I pray for each and every one that are here tonight. That, Lord, that you would bless them. And, Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.